Okay, so yung fourth algorithm natin is SRTF or commonly known as shortest remaining time first. So basically, yung SRTF, so yung ginagawa nito is para siyang counterpart lang ng shortest job first. Yung una natin na pag-aralan. Whereas, ang ginagamit nitong criteria is burst time din in selecting a process. Now, what will be the difference? So technically, yung difference natin dito is that SRTF ngayon is a preemptive type ng algorithm. So preemptive. So starting from this, hanggang sa mga susunod nating mga lesson, we'll be dealing with uh, preemptive type ng algorithm. So ano nga pa si preemptive? So balikan na natin. So when we say preemptive, there's a chance na yung process within the CPU is mapalabas ng CPU even though hindi pa tapos yung burst time niya. Okay? Bakit? Kasi may higher priority na darating. So now, tingnan natin yung nature ng preemptive type na algorithm. So, through this example. Ayan. So, same goes, we'll be using the same example ng mga binigay natin dati. So, para makita natin yung transition ng uh, algorithm. So, let's try to compute. So, ganun pa din. So, anong ginagawa natin dati? Ganun pa din kamukha din dito. Now, so, we'll be having the gun chart again. So, as we can see here, mag-start tayo time 0. At time 0, nandiyan si P4. Okay. So, now, dahil si P4 lang yung laman ng RAM natin, so, automatically, ipaprocess na yun yung CPU. But, in this case, you need to look for the process na darating. Okay. Yung next na darating dito is time 3. Now, Kung sa dati ginagawa natin, pinaprotest natin si P4 ng diretso, by this time, every time na may darating na process, and hindi pa tapos yung nandito sa gun chart, kailangan niyang tumikil to check yung process na dumating. Now, may darating ng time 3, so gagawin natin, si P4 ipaprocess natin hanggang time 3 lang. And then, yung time na na-consume niya from 0 to 3, so, that will be 3 na burst time. So, isubtract lang natin dito. So, this will be 4. Now, at time 3, nandyan pa rin yung P4 kasi hindi ba natin naubos yung burst time niya. So, and also, yung dumating na process which is P1. So, yan. So, at time 3, dalawa na yung process. Now, dito, gamitin natin yung criteria natin na burst time sa kanya. So, lowest burst time pa din. So, P1 and P4, both of them as 4 na burst time. So, again, we need to break the tie. Earliest arrival time. So, earliest arrival time natin will be P4. So, balik ulit si P4 dyan. Now, may darating at time 5. Okay? So, kailangan natin i-process si P4 hanggang time 5 lang. Okay? So, through that, dalawa na lang yung matitirang burst time kay P4. Now, at time 5, active pa rin si P1 and si P4. Tapos, may bagong darating na process dito which is P2. Okay. So again, ba tayo nag-stop ng time 5 kasi may dumating na process ng time 5. Yung time na na-consume ni P4 from time 3 to time 5, sinatrack lang natin to our burst time. And then, ito na yung current burst time niya. Now, dito, tatlo yung natitirang process or active na process sa RAM. So, piliin natin yung pinakamaliit na burst time sa kanila. So, this will be 4, this will be 9, and then this will be 2. So, again, lowest burst time natin si P4. So, balik natin si P4 dito. Okay. Now, next na darating pa process is time 8. Okay. Ang natitarang burst time ni uh, P4 is 2. So, stop tayo at time 7. Okay, kasi ubus na yung burst time niya. At time 7, walang ibang dumating na process, tapos na si P4, so sino-sino yung natira? So you have P1, and then you have P2. Now, between kay P1 and P2, tingin natin yung pinakamababang burst time. So mas mababa si P1, kaya siya yung select natin. Okay, so magpa-process to hanggang time 8. Bakit 8 again? Kasi may darating at time 8. So, eto. Now, si P1, isang burst time lang yung nagamit niya. 
So, i-minus na natin dito. So, this will be 3 yung current burst time. Okay? Nandiyan pa rin si P1. Nandiyan pa rin si P2. And yung bagong dating natin dito, you have P3. Now, look for their burst time. So, by this time, so you have 3, you have 9, you have 4. Lowest burst time natin si P1. So, pa-process natin si P1. Now, next na darating natin na process is time 12. Okay? Si P1, meron siyang burst time na 3. Now, pag naubos natin yung burst time ni P1, it will stop at time 11. So, at time 11, so, i-zero out ko na to, para hindi tayo malito. So, this will be zero na rin, kasi ubos na yung burst time na dito. Now, wala pa naman bagong darating na process kasi time 12 pa. So, tingin natin yung mga current process natin na natitira. So, you have P2, and then you have here P3. Okay. So, next one. So, pili natin mas mababang burst time. So, by this time, so you have here P3. Ayan. So, you have P3. Kasi yung isa is 9. Now, next na darating ang process is time 12. So, technically, again, kailangan tumigil ni P3 ng time 12. Ilan yung nagamit yung burst time? So, isa. So, this will be 3. Okay. So, nandiyan pa rin si P2, nandiyan pa rin si P3, and then you have yung bago, P5. So, through this one, check natin, pinakamababang burst time sa kanila, you have your P3 now. Ito yan. So, the good thing, once na dumating na lahat ng process, is parang mag sjf ka na lang, kasi wala na namang mag interrupt na. So, i-apply na natin yung idea ng uh, SJF. Kasi wala nang process to interrupt yung process na uh, nandito sa RAM natin. So currently, you have your P3 na lowest burst time. So ipaprocess natin siya. And then, pwede na natin consume lahat ng burst time niya. So this will be time 15. At time 15, so this will be 0. Next one, so lowest burst time natin is P5. So, si P5, bubusin na rin natin. So, this will end at time uh, 21. And then lastly, so you have your P2. Ayan. So, you have 9. So, this will end at time 30. Okay. So, just like the others, so ganun pa rin yung nangyari. So, nag-end pa rin tayo na time 30. So, check natin yung utilization. Ayan. So, CPU utilization natin. So, summation ng burst time natin. So, that will be 30 over total end time. So, 30. So, times 100. So, you have 100% utilization. Okay? So, ganun pa din. Ay, so, same pa din. Ganun pa rin yung gagawin natin. So, we need to compute for the end time. And then, so, we need to compute for the turnaround time and the waiting time. Okay? So, yung difference lang natin dito is yung pagkuha ng end time. Okay? So, yung end time natin dito, kukuhanin natin yung last occurrence ng process. Okay? So, start tayo dito para mas madali. So, P2, 30, nag-end. Ayan, P5 will be 21. And then, so you have P3. This will be time 15. So, P1, time 11. And then, P4, time 7. Okay, so ganun pa din. Now, same formula. And time minus arrival to get the uh, turnaround time. So, you have here 8. Okay, so we have here 25, and then you have here 7, and then this will be 7, and then you have here uh, 9. Okay, so next one, uh, so this will be turnaround minus burst time, so you have here 4, and then you have here 16. And then you have here 3, you have 0, and then you have here 3. Okay. 
So next, we need to compute for the average turnaround time and then average waiting time. Ay, so sum nito to get the turnaround time. So this will be 56 over 5. So this will be 11.5. 20. Okay, so next one. So sum again ito. So this will be 26 over 5. So this will be uh, 5.20. Okay. So again, ang ginamit natin dito is 5. Kasi again, 5 processes. So same pa rin naman siya. Okay. So that is how we compute for SRTF na gumagamit ng preemptive type na uh, algorithm.